Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is April the 3rd, 2020. Let's talk football. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, this video is really about three quarterback prospects. I believe we've been hearing a lot of smoke from people in and around the NFL, right? For good reason. Obviously, people are blowing smoke, dissing guys who are highly talented who they're hoping to draft, right? They need for the guy to slip a few places. It doesn't help you. If you're the Dolphins picking number five, or if you're the Chargers picking number six, if everyone in the building knows who you want. So you have teams that need a quarterback, either playing the, we don't know what we're gonna do, we have no comment game, or hinting that certain guys have holes in their game, right? Well, there's a reason why Cam, Jameis, and Andy don't have full-time jobs for next year right now. And it's because the talent at quarterback this year is deep. It's deeper than most years. So let's go through some of the prospects. I believe at least two of the three guys I'm going to name will be picked in the top 10. Right? I believe that there is a dark horse among the three who might actually be picked number one in the draft, right? If not number one, then certainly, in my opinion, no later than number six. Let's go through them. I'll just talk about my own personal experience, uh, betting on or against these guys. Now, I was quietly betting against Joe Burrow. Guy was new at LSU. Uh, the guy had flamed out at Ohio State. He was playing some tough teams. LSU, even under Coach O, had had problems offensively uh, before this last season. So in his ninth game, I thought Alabama was going to beat them. He goes out, throws for 393 yards. Three TDs, no picks. Right? Let me just say this. So after the game, I wanted to know what happened. How come LSU's offense was so successful against a very good Alabama defense? Right? Keep in mind, too, Saban was able to watch the guy play for eight games before that Alabama-LSU game. So when I looked at the highlights, I was shocked, right? Joe Burrow's throwing the ball in a tight windows. In other words, it's not that guys on defense are falling down and it's all an offensive coordinator. No, no, this guy, and he's 6'4", right? Has a decent arm, doesn't have a great arm. One of the guys I'm going to name here has a great arm. This guy, decent arm, not a great arm. But my God, this guy could read defenses. This guy was extremely accurate. So then we get to the 13th game of the season against Georgia. I thought LSU was going to have problems. Right? Joe Burrow throws for 14 days. No picks. 349 yards against a tough Georgia team. So I went and I looked at the film just to see what happened, right? Doing an autopsy on a failed bet, right? I didn't, I didn't mention this bet publicly because I didn't have the firm conviction that I have in the bets I publicly release. So this was just my own private betting. And of course, in that Georgia game, same thing. I'm looking at the film. LSU guys are covered. Joe Burrow is throwing the ball in tight windows. 
So we get to the coup de gras, his game against Clemson. Now understand, this was for the national championship. Nerve wracking. Dabo Sweeney, one of the very best coaches in college, had multiple weeks to get ready for this game. Clemson hadn't lost in a long time. Right? Um, all I can say is, Joe Burrow went out, same thing, threw the ball in tight windows. Right? Excellent Clemson defense. Burrow was ready. Five TDs, no picks, 463 yards. Now, I cannot argue, right, simply cannot argue with the people who feel that Joe Burrow an Ohio guy, should be the first pick of the draft taken by the Cincinnati, Ohio Bengals, right? I have, you know, I have no argument. This guy has beaten me on bets. When I've looked on film, it's him, right? Don't get me wrong. The offensive coordinator is creative, but you get the feeling this guy is making plays, right? While LSU had talent, Joe Burrow was making throws, right? I also like his height. He seems to see over the defense. It suits him. He's a pocket passer. He's not a running quarterback. Right, Joe Burrow is a serious quarterback prospect. Again, I cannot dispute that this guy could be the first pick in the draft. Right, in Las Vegas right now, he's the overwhelming favorite to go number one. He's not who I would take. But I can't argue with the politics of it. You're an Ohio team picking number one. And here's a guy from Ohio who is the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, who against Georgia, Alabama, and Clemson, three of the toughest teams in college football, throws no picks. Well, let's talk about Tua. I know this is Colin Cowherd's favorite college player. And the numbers are dazzling. 33 TDs. Three picks. 11.3 yards per attempt. Completion percentage of 71.4. For his college career, 87 touchdowns, only 11 picks. Right now, if you believe in the Patriot way, and keep in mind, Brian Flores, Patriot alum, right, former member of the Patriot coaching staff, is the head coach for the team picking fifth, the Miami Dolphins. Then one of the first rules of life in the Patriot way is that the quarterback's not supposed to throw picks. Right, the quarterback is supposed to be like Tom Brady. Not a lot of mistakes, right? You can't have a, a Jameis Winston guy throwing 30 picks, wearing a Patriot uniform. So I do have a hard time believing that Tua might slip past the Dolphins. He certainly can read progressions. But I have the same problem with Tua that I have with Joe Burrow. Right? Tua has a nice arm. It's not a great arm. You're not going to confuse him with John Elway or Jeff George anytime soon or Randall Cunningham. Right? He doesn't have that level of arm. Also, he's a little bit smaller. 6'1" but he doesn't have the elusiveness in the pocket of, let's say, a Kyler Murray or a Russell Wilson. 
Right now I know there are guys in the league like Drew Brees. Now gamblers need to be careful thinking that college guys fit outliers in the NFL, right? I haven't seen a lot of 6'1 and shorter quarterbacks like Drew Brees who are pocket passers, right? If you're shorter, you need to be able to move a little bit, right? Steve Young. Michael Vick, right? You need to be able to move a little bit so you can get vision to see downfield, right? I do have concerns about the fact that Tua is really trying to be a pocket passer without the physical gifts of a Russell Wilson. These are the same concerns that people have with the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns, right? The uh, bottom line is there's risk involved with Tua. Let me talk about two other areas of risk. There's the wide receiver problem. You look at Alabama, and I would say Alabama probably had the best group of wide receivers in college football, right? You and I know that wide receivers, a collection like that, don't exist on the Redskins who pick second. Right? The Lions who pick third. The Dolphins who pick fifth. You're not going to have receivers that fast and so many of them against the defense that can't match up physically in college. Right? In college, a guy like Hazlitt is killing DBs. In the pros, they're guys who can run as fast as him. So, Tua seemed to have a lot to work with in college. We didn't really see him under siege that much. Then, of course, there are the injury concerns. Now, one of the best running backs I ever saw in my life, the guy averaged, by the way, more than five yards a carry for his career. And this was with him playing football part-time. This is a guy who would play a baseball season, then would go play football, and the guy was averaging more than five yards a carry. Right? This is, of course, after winning the Heisman in college. Freak athlete, one of the best athletes, hands down, I've seen in my life, Bo Jackson. Well, the bottom line is this. Bo Jackson then hurt his hip. Now, granted, he had necrosis. No one's saying Tua has necrosis. But the one thing I know is when a guy hurts his hip, that's almost like a boxer hurting his hands. That's a serious injury. You saw when Tua got hurt the level of pain he was in as they took him off the field. Now let's be real about the NFL draft. You can blow draft picks in the third, fourth, fifth round if you have a top 10 pick. You don't want to blow it. You know a third of these players aren't going to work out aren't going to live up to the height, aren't going to live up to the billing. If I blow a top 10 pick, especially when I'm picking a quarterback, I might end up like the Redskins, right? Haskins didn't work out last year. Guess what? The Redskins have a new coach. They sucked last year. They have the second pick in this draft. Right? Think about it. So, I believe the injury problem, and keep in mind too, that hip injury wasn't the first injury Tua suffered. Now, when you look at, historically, some undersized quarterbacks, 
Fran Tarkington, Russell Wilson, for example, right? The guy's either sturdy or he's not. Either you look at him and you think he's undersized or you look at him and you realize he has a way to play the game that protects his health. Right? Let me just flatly say, I don't consider Tua to be the athlete that Hall of Famer Steve Young was, Michael Vick was, Fran Tarkington was, Russell Wilson is. Right? I don't consider him to be that level of athlete. Now, if he's getting hurt in college, I'm sorry, I have concerns about him getting hurt in the pros, especially behind some of these offensive lines. Josh Rosen tried to hang with the Dolphins. I saw Rosen play in college. I'm one of those who believes that Josh Rosen is an NFL talent. I know there's a crowd out there who questions that. He didn't have time to throw. He didn't have time to think with the Dolphins. Ryan Fitzpatrick ended up quarterbacking games for the Dolphins. Right? I wonder. Let's say Tua goes high. I don't see Tua being the top pick of the draft. Right? I don't think Baker Mayfield has convinced NFL GMs that a non-mobile 6-1 guy right, can show up in the league and dominate. Browns missed the playoffs last year. I don't see Tua getting picked by the Bengals ahead of Joe Burrow. Right? Given that the Redskins are committed to Dwayne Haskins, I don't see them picking him. I know Matthew Stafford hasn't won a playoff game. He's a better quarterback to me than Tua. He just needs a better setup. Right? Giants, who pick fourth after the Lions pick third, the Giants have a young quarterback that they picked in the top ten last year. So if Tua doesn't go number one, assuming teams don't trade, right, the earliest he would go is number five. And if I'm the Dolphins, I have concerns. Understand, I know Brady missed a season with a knee injury. That's that Matt Castle season. But Tom Brady was very durable with the Patriots. That's what the Dolphins need. Right? I don't, um, let's just say I'm expecting Tua with great numbers. Right? Finishes second in the Heisman Trophy voting two years ago. Comes back last year, has an even higher quarterback rating. Right? 30 more touchdowns and interceptions last year. I don't expect Tua with great numbers to be the top pick of the draft, or the second, or the third, or the fourth. Now, let's talk about the guy who, if I were a GM, I would pick number one in this draft. I know you're not hearing a lot about his game right now because Burrow is the Heisman Trophy winner. He's the consensus first pick of the draft. Right? Tua, of course, highly regarded. He finished second in the Heisman two years ago. Very highly regarded. The news seems to be dominated by him to the point where Tua at one point said that he wanted to be a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys. This was while Dak Prescott was holding out. Well, let me just say, there's a sleeper in this draft. Truth be told, I'll be surprised if there isn't somebody in the room with the Bengals not talking about this guy. He is the best athlete, hands down, at the quarterback position, who's a top 10 talent. Much better athlete than Joe Burrow. In my opinion, a much better athlete than Tua. Understand, Tua 6'1". Justin Herbert is 6'6". Right, full disclosure, I'm a 
season ticket holder for a Pac-12 school. Right, I've looked at Herbert, who went to Oregon for, I believe, four years. Right? Understand, this is the guy who's 6'6", who, run, who ran a sub 4'7", in the 40. Right? I'm just telling you, he has a gun. He also is a guy who was an academic All-American, forget athletics, his junior and senior year. Right? There's a lot of pressure on quarterbacks coming out of Oregon. Right? Oregon is one of those schools that has a tradition of being a offensive juggernaut. Right? Marcus Mariota, for example, went to Oregon. I'm just telling you, this guy's a better athlete than Marcus Mariota. I understand that the West Coast tends to be overlooked somewhat when rating college players, right? We keep hearing about SEC teams and stuff like that, right? Or Big 12 teams. People have gaudy numbers. Understand, in the Pac-12, you're not going to have the gaudy numbers that guys do coming out of air raid offenses. It's more of a pro-style offense out here. Let me just say this about Justin Herbert. He passes the first rule of Patriot football. And again, the Dolphins have the fifth pick in the draft. Brian, Brian Flores, the head coach there, is a Patriot guy. Right? Herbert doesn't throw a lot of picks. This past year, he had 36 touchdowns. He had only six interceptions. Now, let's talk about the shortcomings on Herbert. Number one, he's not a media-friendly, rah-rah guy. This guy's like Larry Bird. You see him in interviews, he's a little rough around the edges. You see his game and you think, okay, well, this guy has to be media friendly. This is the kind of game that would attract media attention. Also, he's the quarterback, right? The press wants to speak with the quarterback. Then you hear him talk and the guy doesn't know the right things to say. He's not as polished as Burrow. He's not as polished as Tua in interviews, right? Again, this is a guy who's an academic all-American. I'm just telling you, much stronger arm, much stronger arm than Burrow or Tua. Right? Mature. He's older. Just like those guys. Tua played three years at Alabama. Right? Joe Burrow's an older guy. Right? Joe Burrow is older right now than the NFL MVP. Jackson, out of Baltimore, right? Herbert is older. He just finished his senior year at Oregon. Right? Mature player. Now, I'll confess that there are some areas for concern with Herbert. With Herbert. He did lose to Auburn the opening week. He only had 242 passing yards. One touchdown. He did lose, and this is the game you need to look at if you have concerns about him, to Herman Edwards in Arizona State. Right? Had Oregon won that game, they would have been in the driver's seat. Herbert throws two picks. Did have 304 passing yards, but threw two picks to go with two touchdowns. Understand, too, Arizona State had been struggling in the Pac-12, right? They started strong, then they went through a rough patch. It was shocking that Herman Edwards was able to come up with a game plan to slow down Herbert. Let me also say too, his last three games, and all of them were wins. All of them were wins. His last three games, he failed to get over 200 passing yards in any of the three. Right? Part of that was by design. 
eat up the clock, etc. Understand, those three games were against Oregon State. This is college football, Oregon versus Oregon State. That's a huge state rivalry game, right? Guys play inspired football. Utah, which was a juggernaut in the Pac-12, and Wisconsin in the bowl game. Now, again, he wins all three games, but he didn't have the gaudy numbers that Burrow and Tua had, right? Also, in terms of injuries, one of these years, not this last year, but either his junior or sophomore year, he did miss five games with a broken collarbone. If someone wants to, you know, look at his injury history. I'll just put it to you this way. In terms of athleticism and throwing the ball deep, Right? I think this guy, over time, is going to outperform Burrow, who really is a one-year wonder, and Tua, who's a smaller guy, who's accurate deep, but who doesn't have this guy's arm strength. Right? If I'm the Bengals, and if I sense, given the layout of the draft, Right, If I sense that the Dolphins want Joe Burrow or are in love with Tua and that the Redskins, Lions, and Giants aren't going to pick a quarterback, I might trade out of the first slot, allow the Dolphins to get Joe Burrow so I can get this guy. Right, I have no doubt about this guy's physical ability to make it in the NFL. As I said, he has a cannon on his shoulder. He's 6'6". He's a smart guy. He gets rid of the ball quickly. He can move. Right? He also doesn't throw interceptions. My concern with Burrow, who's throwing the ball in tight windows, is that if the DBs in the NFL are just slightly better than the DBs in college, some of these tight window throws might end up being picks. I have another concern. LSU had a completely different offense two years ago. Right, so this last year, Coach O blows up the offense, right? Comes up with a new style. When I see that in college ball, then I'm guessing that first, let's say, month, month and a half, teams are just going to be overwhelmed by the new style. The other team will not have prepared for the new style LSU has. Right? Their playbook would be based on the LSU they'd seen in the past. Not this new team. Right, Part of Burrow's stats might be the fact that LSU had a brand new offense. Threw off opposing teams. Let's face it too. In the pros, the players are working full time. In college... You know, the guys are actually students. At least they're supposed to be. They're working part-time. They're part-time players. So by the time the word got out that LSU had changed their offense, and by the time teams were able to digest that, Joe Burrow was already a Heisman Trophy candidate. LSU's offense was already putting up great numbers. Right? There's no such dramatic change with the Oregon offense, right? And I'm just telling you, I watched numerous games with this guy, Justin Herbert. He's the kind of guy who you look at and you know immediately, this is a pro-level quarterback, right? I think he's a serious sleeper in this draft. I could easily see him getting picked first. Right? Now, I agree. Politically, it's going to be tough to pick someone other than the Heisman Trophy winner. 
I'll agree, in Vegas right now, it's long odds for him being picked first. I'll agree with both of those things, right? But I'd be shocked if you have a quarterback who's this good, right? The numbers are staggering for a Pac-12 quarterback. Again, understand, we're not doing air raid football out here. These numbers are spectacular for a Pac-12 quarterback. You look at the guy's height, you look at his athleticism, you look at his ability to throw deep, and you realize, my goodness, you know, immediately, I know some of the better teams in this league have to be salivating about the possibility of picking this guy. I'm just telling you, if the Steelers were in the top 10, there's no way this guy would slip by them, right? He's big like Ben. He's younger. He's more athletic. He can throw the ball deep. He fits into the Steeler vertical stretch the field philosophy. He's not a check down guy, right? He's sturdy. He's not coming off a hip injury that prevented him from working at the Combine. Right? This guy would be an obvious pick. So I think three years from now, and that's how really the judge drafts. I think of these three guys, and I know Colin Cowherd again is all over Tua. I'm just telling you, I got beaten multiple games by Joe Burrow. And when I looked at the film after the game, I realized, man, this guy beat me. Right? I realize all three of these guys are talented, but three years from now, I'll be surprised if Justin Herbert isn't the best quarterback coming out of this draft. Right? I'll be absolutely shocked if he slips by the Chargers, who pick sixth right after the Dolphins. Right? I wouldn't be surprised if he gets picked before number six. I don't know how the Dolphins, if they've done their homework, don't pick the guy, right? But the one thing I know is that the Chargers are on the West Coast. I know they need to sell tickets and stuff like that, and I know the other two guys have bigger names. But in my opinion, nothing sells tickets long-term in the NFL better than winning. And they have to realize they're not going to find a better athlete at the quarterback position in this draft. Right? They're just not. They're not going to find a stronger arm in this draft than this guy. They're not going to find a guy who is more pro-ready than this guy. There's no question about his size. He's 6'6". He's not 6'1". You look at his game and it translates. You say, okay, if Ben could move, run a sub 4'740", I believe he'd be this guy, right? Put it this way, Justin Herbert right now, were he in the NFL, in terms of just being an athlete at the position, he would be in the top five, right? I don't think this guy slips by number six in this year's draft. Keep an eye on him. I'll be surprised if some team doesn't make a move to trade up to get him earlier than six. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Let me just point out, too, that should the Chargers not pick Herbert, right? Should he slip? Understand, the Panthers at seven signed Teddy Bridgewater. The Cardinals are sitting pretty with the first pick from last year's draft, Kyler Murray. Right? Number nine would be the Jags. There is no way Justin Herbert, in my opinion, 
slips past the Jags at nine. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you if he's with the Chargers, folks. He'd be a very strong Rookie of the Year candidate. Very strong. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.